Hello there friends and welcome. It's Morgana here with today's demonstration. Today I will be painting for you this lovely little red boathouse on a lakeside with some beautiful reflections. You can see I'm beginning here with uh, my paper taped down and the boathouse already painted out in masking fluid along with uh, three trees and a handful of birds. Um, I'll pop the outline for this on my Patreon page if anybody is interested. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. Using the masking fluid means that I'm able to keep the white off the paper for that lovely little boathouse so I can paint it in after the initial wash as well as uh, these three lovely trees which I'm going to paint as silver birch trees with lovely pale bark. So as you can see here, the first thing I'm doing is thoroughly wetting the top half of the paper. This is going to be our sty, and for this lovely sty I wanted to keep it relatively simple, so I'm using my large 2 inch wash brush to sweep in a goodly amount of ultramarine blue. You can see I'm varying the colour along the sty, some darker patches and some paler patches, uh, give the impression of clouds. And now I'm sweeping the tips of my brush along the bottom part of the paper. This is dry paper. You can see it's leaving these uh, streaky brush marks, which we are now going to soften down with my water spray. Uh, just doing a good little spritz there, concentrating it on the lower half of the paper. I don't want to spray into the sty. That's our sty pretty much done for now. Lovely and simple. So this below is going to be our water for the lake shore which is why I want a little bit of texture hence the uh, the brushing the dry brushing but I also want it to look quite soft and calm so I'm softening parts of it down with the water spray you can see those lines are blurring the paint is running and now I'm just going to uh, control the spread of it a little again with my wash brush uh, this is a uh, two inch Dela Rowney Aquafine uh, Skyflow brush for anyone who's interested. You can see how easily uh, it glides over the paper, picks up that water and moves it around in a really lovely manner. Now I'm just cleaning it off, wiping it down uh, on a little bit of tissue so it's barely damp. And you can see I'm, you can use it to uh, suck up any excess uh, water. Uh, any moisture that you've got on the paper that you're worried might run back and cause uh, blobs or cauliflowers. You can use a damp brush to just gently take those out of the equation. Now you can see how just using the soft tips of that brush, I've uh, softened those harsh strokes on the lake uh, right down you can still see a little hint of the dry brushing there but uh, it looks lovely and soft and a little more like water. I'm just softening back the sky a little bit, just doing a little bit of extra blending, <laughs> entirely optional. Um, I do think I, I tend to fuss a little too much with details such as that but uh, there we are, we all have our bad habits. <laughs> Now again, just using this nice big brush to get in some detail uh, quite quickly. This is the shadow of our lovely trees that we're going to have coming in behind our little red bow house. And I'm using indigo for this, another lovely uh, deeper shade of blue than the ultramarine. Goes really well, I think. And I'm just using the flat tips of the brush to start working the color into the paper. It's still quite damp, so it's blending and spreading nicely and I'm just sort of dabbing it on, trying to make some interesting marks here. So I'm sweeping the brush up. This is giving me these lovely lines which are going to soften and start to look almost like the uh, distant trunks of our background trees that are going to be put in shortly. You can see the, uh, the marks I've made here, they're not too smooth, they're a little blobby and blotchy, and as I said, the lines there, which are going to become distant tree trunks, really happy with that as a little, uh, little bit of background there for our trees. 
and of course seeing as this is a house set on water I don't want to uh, neglect the reflections so using the indigo again I'm going to uh, gently rough in a reflection of this general silhouette uh, this general shape of the uh, background trees that I've put in here just using some uh, light horizontal strokes just to try and get the shape right uh, and get the impression of the uh, the reflection on that water so you get those lovely horizontal lines where the ripples of the water show the reflection slightly wobbly <laughs> just blending that up there almost to the shoreline almost coming up to where the boathouse sits I'm going to leave a little bit of white space there and then just start bringing that indigo slightly very slightly into the rest of the lake just to give the uh, hint and shadow of some extra uh, ripples in the water an extra little bit of uh, watery details there just to, so it doesn't look too uh, smooth and empty and now I'm just using a mop brush to just soften this reflection down a little just with some clean water just going over that edge there that point where the water reaches up towards the shoreline just beginning to soften it all down just using a little bit of extra water to try and soften and blend and now this is a neat little trick uh, to get a little bit of the uh, lighter coloured ripples of the late water into this darker spot using a piece of folded up tissue and just lightly drawing it across the paint while it's still wet you can see it's leaving uh, these faint horizontal white marks and this is uh, going to act almost as our sort of little bits of light hitting the water and glinting off the surface of the lake You can see I'm using it to just get that outline even more blended so the uh, reflection looks lovely and natural. Now we mustn't neglect our trees here on the left. Can't have them simply growing out of the lake. We want a little spit of land for them to rest on. So again with this lovely flat wash brush just putting in really quickly and simply a uh, lovely little spit of land again using indigo to start with just to rough in the general shape here and just pulling the tips of the brush down to create some reflections now just coming in with my slightly smaller flat brush this is a one inch flat brush just to add a little bit more detail uh, to this lovely little spit of land uh, again bringing in some darker color this is uh, again indigo but a richer mixture and you can see again I'm just using that lovely flat uh, chisel edge to quickly introduce the sense of a little bit of landfall there And now starting on these lovely uh, misty background trees, I'm using a foliage brush to uh, start dabbing in a bit of detail. So again I'm using indigo but this is a very loose mix, you can see it's going on quite pale to start with. This is uh, diluted down with quite a bit of water and all I'm doing is to dab along the top ridge of this shadow we've created and start introducing uh, some lovely texture that looks like it could be the tops of our lovely trees. See I'm bringing it down uh, to a certain point just above the boathouse uh, and then dipping down into a little bit more uh, sort of scrubby foliage on that uh, 
spit of land there. But I want to leave a little bit uh, of space next to the boathouse where you can see our uh, initial uh, shadow has dried with these uh, lovely stripes that do indeed look a little bit like the uh, background misty trunks of our distant trees. Uh, for those of you wondering, this is a Matthew Palmer tree and texture brush, size large. Uh, I believe they come in small and medium as well. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's really useful, as you can see, for popping in these kinds of details very quickly. Of course, there's lots of other uh, foliage brushes out there. They all seem to have sort of varied lengths of uh, bristle. Uh, some are soft, some are quite hard. Uh, really, it's up to you to uh, find which one you prefer. This is my favourite at the moment. <laughs> of course, that may all change in a month or two if I find another, but um, for now, this is one that I would recommend. Now to introduce a lovely pop of colour into this painting, uh, I again coming in with the texture brush, I'm using uh, some burnt sienna paint and just starting to pop it on over where I've put the uh, indigo foliage. You can see on this front bit of land on the left, I've just popped it in there to give a little nice bright zing of colour which really draws the eye. And on the right side, our background distant trees have introduced a little bit next to the boathouse uh, give the impression of some lovely sort of fiery uh, shrubs, bushes, a little garden perhaps. And in our background trees, we have sort of almost two layers. We have the very top layer and then uh, I've introduced another sort of slight curve of shadow, which will be uh, the slightly shorter trees, the tops of them just there. And as you can see here, I'm also introducing a, uh, the colour in a flat way, uh, using a liner brush to just uh, bulk out, I suppose, the, uh, the little bit of land that our beautiful boathouse is going to sit on. Just to emphasise the land a little bit more, make it stand out from those trees. I'm using again the burnt sienna and just using the liner brush, holding it flat against the paper, taking advantage of those lovely long bristles and... Uh, getting some lovely straight lines in there. This is just to add a little bit of extra depth and complexity to our background, but in a, in a nice easy manner. As you can see here, just coming in again with the lovely burnt sienna and adding some texture into this lovely bank of trees here. A little bit of texture and colour, brightening it all up a bit. Still trying to keep that lovely soft indigo shadow uh, and the uh, darkness of the indigo trees, a little bit of variation uh, in tree tone. And today I'm using the fan brush to just really emphasise the reflections that we're going to get in this lovely lake. So you can see I'm placing the bristles flat on the paper 
and pulling down from that little spit of land with a slight wiggle to uh, imitate the um, ripple that you get in the uh, in the calm lake waters. You can see that's a lovely easy way uh, to get some simple but very pretty uh, reflections in your water. Now again using the fan brush, just a little uh, splatter going on there, just very gently, not too enthusiastically, <laughs> uh, just in a little bit of detail going on there that looks like some lovely seeds or fireflies, mayflies glittering across the, uh, the lake service surface <laughs> and along that little spit of land there. Uh, the observant among you will have noticed that when I was putting in the flat detail with the liner brush that it was kicking out a little bit of paint, uh, a little bit of splatter along the way, uh, which I didn't mind at the time as I knew I was going to splatter over with the fan brush anyway. Um, but that is something to look out for. If that's something that you don't want in your uh, painting, then um, I would advise using again a flat brush, the edge of a flat brush to do that sort of detail because you don't get splatters. <laughs> now again you can see I'm using the liner brush. This is a uh, Pro Art uh, sword liner brush, size small, which means it has a slightly chiselled uh, tip. Uh, but it's also fantastic for doing these lovely long lines. As you can see I've done these lovely long wiggly lines here uh, in some quite light paint. This is very diluted paint here I'm using for the reflections. Uh, as I don't want to, it to be too strong and bold and to precisely replicate these beautiful trees we have on the land. And we're doing a, a softer imitation of them. So you can see again coming in with the tree and texture brush and starting to put in the foliage. But again using very very weak paint, uh, getting it lovely and light at least to start with. And just trying to do a gentle imitation of the trees we've already done and putting it in very lightly uh, on the lake and not worrying about being too precise as well. This is a reflection in water rather than directly on a mirror and it's not designed to be absolutely mirror smooth so you don't need to worry too much about the details as long as the general shape and outline is there. That's why I'm just sort of going in and dabbing very lightly with the paint sort of building the colour up and I'm just going to keep building it up until I'm happy with it. So now we've got everything completely dry here, uh, it's time to rub off the masking fluid. You can see the uh, lovely shape of this first tree appearing. 
And now that I've rubbed it all off, you can see the lovely white shape of our boathouse, those three trees and some uh, bird shapes in our sky all ready and waiting. So again, using the liner brush here to put in a little bit of detail on this first tree, um, I'm using a mixture of Payne's Grey and Sepia here, and I'm just going to follow the masked out outline of the tree with my uh, the very fine point of my liner brush. But as this is going to be a silver birch tree, I want some silvery bark showing through, so I'm not going to go over and completely follow uh, all of the white lines, I want a little bit of white peeping through so it can keep uh, that fabulous glimmer that um, makes it stand out from the background foliage. As you can see, I've just repeated the process here on the left hand side with these other two trees. Done exactly the same thing. Worked that um, the liner brush up and down those white lines just to get a little bit of detail in. Just using the uh, foliage brush here to uh, embed those trees a little firmer into the landscape by building a little bit of dart around them and making sure they look uh, like they're properly in that little spit of land rather than just being plonked on the top there. So introducing again the sepia now, sepia and Payne's grey mix just to uh, get a few extra darts into this foreground to really uh, make everything uh, stand out a bit more. Now I'm using a flat brush to pop in the detail on our boathouse. This is really going to be lovely and simple. I decided that a red would stand out the most and uh, from this background, I love a little red house. <laughs> so again, just using a flat synthetic watercolour brush. Uh, I believe this is a size 6, but you can use whichever size works for you. I chose this as you can see, it's filling in the sides of the boathouse really easily just with a couple of quick strokes and I'm using um, Windsor & Newton Cotman brand light red for this uh, as I think it really is a wonderful red shade it stands out and is beautifully bright without being uh, in any way sort of too fluorescent or vulgar I think it's a really lovely colour of course uh, you're more than welcome to use whichever colour you see fit it may not be a little red boathouse, you may have a boathouse of your own that you want to paint in this sort of manner. Um, do use whichever colour you see fit, whichever colour is your favourite, whichever you think is going to work in your own particular painting. So now I'm just introducing a dark roof onto my boathouse using again the uh, little flat brush and some Payne's Grey. And I'm not going to fill in all of the white completely, I'm going to leave a couple of little dry brush spots just to give the impression that this, uh, this little boathouse has uh, been through a little bit of wear and tear.
and just switching to a smaller fine detail brush and putting in the doorway again with the Payne's Grey and then uh, just going to put a little bit of extra detail and shadow uh, underneath the roof of the boathouse just on the just shading in a little bit of that red there along the top And now for the uh, final addition to our reflections. I can't have the uh, reflections on a lake without including our lake house. So you can see I'm uh, using a softer variation of this light red. I've uh, diluted it down with a little water uh, to begin with and just using the tree and texture brush as I think it gives a really interesting sort of wavery effect. And I'm just starting to bring the red and the black sorry the uh, paint grey not the black uh, but bring those two colours down uh, from the uh, from the land there and introduce the reflections into the water And I've just switched to a flat brush in order to get a little bit more detail there. Now finishing touch, putting in the uh, reflection of these lovely birch trees. I'm afraid I forgot to film putting in the uh, initial Woodley line reflections you can see there on the left. Um, apologies for that, uh, but it's done in exactly the same manner as I did the reflections before with the line brush just following the general shape of the tree and doing those soft little wiggly lines to imitate the ripple of the wind across the surface of the water. And all I'm doing now is just going over them with a little bit of Chinese white, which is an opaque uh, white colour, which uh, is just going to brighten up those reflections and again be the reflection of the white silver birch bark in the water there. <laughs> and now this really is the finishing touch. Um, our lovely little flock of birds here, which was already uh, waiting for us in the sky after rubbing off the masking fluid decided to put in a little bit of dark detail on their wings just to make them stand out We've got these lovely black and white birds flying high across the lake so again just using the liner brush here to just go along the underside of their wings and just put in a little bit of a darker line using some Payne's grey And here we have it, the finished painting. Thank you very much everybody for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video or subscribe to my channel for more art videos. Um, also please feel free to check out my Patreon page. I'll pop the link down below which has some uh, exclusive video tutorials on it as well as reference photos. Uh, I'll drop a link to my Etsy store as well where you can buy my artwork if you'd like. 
Uh, thank you very much again for watching everybody. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this painting uh, as much as I enjoyed painting it uh, and I look forward to seeing you all again in the next video.